The marshland stretched out like an ancient, forgotten world, shrouded in an eternal fog that turned daylight into a perpetual twilight. Dr. Eleanor White and Dr. Jacob Stevens, biologists with a passion for uncharted ecosystems, had arrived with the intent to study the diverse flora and fauna of this enigmatic place. Armed with notebooks, cameras, and an insatiable curiosity, they set up camp near the edge of the marsh. Eleanor, a woman in her mid-thirties, with a sharp intellect and an ever-present air of determination, found herself mesmerized by the sheer density of life around them. Jacob, her colleague and longtime friend, was equally fascinated, his enthusiasm bubbling over as he cataloged each new discovery. The first few days were filled with excitement and wonder as they documented previously unknown plant species and observed rare animals. But as the sun dipped below the horizon on the third evening, the fog thickened and an uneasy feeling settled over their camp. It's strange, isn't it? Eleanor mused, peering into the thickening mist. This fog, it feels almost alive. Jacob chuckled nervously. Just your imagination, Ellie. Marshes are naturally misty places. But Eleanor couldn't shake the feeling. There was something off about this place, something that felt watched. She dismissed it as overactive nerves and settled into her tent, though sleep came fitfully. The next morning, they ventured deeper into the marsh, the fog clinging to their skin like a cold sweat. The further they went, the more oppressive the silence became. No birds, no insects, just the sound of their own footsteps squelching in the wet earth. Look at this, Jacob whispered, pointing to a cluster of peculiar tracks in the mud. They were unlike any animal tracks they had seen before. Elongated, almost human, but with too many toes, and a bizarre, twisted shape. What could have made these? Eleanor asked, her voice tinged with unease. Jacob shook his head. I have no idea. Maybe a mutated species. We should take photos and samples. As they worked, the fog seemed to press closer the air growing colder. An unnatural stillness enveloped them, broken only by an occasional distant rustle. Eleanor glanced around, feeling the weight of unseen eyes upon them. That night, as they reviewed their findings, the fog seeped into their camp, thicker and more tangible than before. It wrapped around them, curling through the trees and settling on their equipment. Eleanor's unease grew into a knot of dread. I think we should leave, Jacob, she said, her voice barely above a whisper. Something's not right here. Jacob frowned. We've come so far. We can't leave just because of some fog. But Eleanor couldn't shake the feeling of being watched. Hunted. Her instincts screamed at her to flee, but logic and curiosity held her back. They decided to stay one more night, promising to head back at dawn. As they slept, a low, guttural noise echoed through the camp, waking Eleanor. She sat up, heart pounding, and listened. The sound was unlike anything she had heard before, a blend of growls, hisses, and whispers that set her nerves on edge. Jacob, wake up, she hissed, shaking him awake. Do you hear that? He listened, his eyes widening. What is that? They crept out of their tents, flashlights in hand, and scanned the fog-shrouded marsh. The noise grew louder, closer. Panic surged through Eleanor as she caught a glimpse of movement in the fog. Shadows shifting, shapes twisting, something not quite human. Run, she whispered, grabbing Jacob's arm. We need to get out of here. They bolted through the marsh, the fog thickening around them, obscuring their path. The sounds of pursuit grew louder, closer. Eleanor's breath came in ragged gasps as she pushed forward, desperate to escape the unseen horrors. Suddenly, Jacob stumbled and fell, crying out in pain. Eleanor turned back, horror gripping her as she saw him being dragged into the fog by something monstrous. Twisted limbs, gnarled claws, eyes glowing with malevolent intelligence. Jacob, she screamed, rushing to him, but the fog swallowed him whole, leaving only his terrified screams behind. She ran, tears streaming down her face, heart pounding in her chest. The fog seemed to close in on her, whispering her name, taunting her with unseen horrors. She stumbled upon their camp, the tents torn and equipment scattered as if ransacked by some frenzied beast. Eleanor knew she couldn't stay. She grabbed what she could, notes, samples, anything that might explain what had happened, and fled, the fog pursuing her with relentless intent. She didn't stop running until she burst out of the marsh and into the relative safety of a nearby town. Exhausted and terrified, Eleanor tried to explain what had happened, 
but her story was met with skepticism and disbelief. No one believed her tales of the fog and the creatures within it. The marshland was declared off limits, but the fog remained, a silent sentinel guarding its secrets. Years later, Eleanor's findings were published, but they raised more questions than answers. The tracks, the samples, the eerie noises, all pointed to something beyond natural explanation. The marshland remained a mystery, a place of fear and legend. Eleanor never returned, but the fog continued to haunt her dreams, whispering her name, reminding her of the horrors she had escaped. And somewhere in the depths of that fog-shrouded marsh, the creatures waited hungry and patient for the next unwary soul to venture into their domain. The marshland stands as a silent reminder of the unknown, a place where science and reason falter and the supernatural reigns. Those who hear the tale of Dr. Eleanor White and Dr. Jacob Stevens are left with a lingering dread, a fear of the unseen horrors that lurk in the fog. The marshland is a place of nightmares where the line between reality and terror is forever blurred.